Three police officers are on trial in St. Louis, accused of brutally beating one of their own. In September of 2017, Detective Luther Hall was working undercover at a protest that erupted after a local police officer was found not guilty of mur murdering a black man that he shot after a car chase. So while at the demonstration, Hall was severely beaten by a group of police officers who say that they thought he was a protester. The trial against three of those officers is in its second week. Following this story for us now is investigative reporter Lauren, uh, Lauren Traeger from our St. Louis affiliate. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, Lauren. Man, this is a really, really interesting and disturbing case um, that I am surprised has not risen to the level of a national story. Um, so that being said, many people may not have heard of this story, particularly because, you know, the incident happened back in 2017. So bring us up to speed. What happened to Luther Hall back then? Well, I think you make an excellent point. It really has not gained a lot of national attention. That's been kind of surprising to us here in the local media as well. And I think you kind of summarized it pretty well. There was some community outrage over that trial where that officer was acquitted in that murder case. So Luther Hall is a St. Louis police officer. He is African-American. He was assigned that night as a detective to work undercover. So there were protests that evening. He was there not, he says, to monitor the protesters, but to gather evidence of potential crime. So if there was property damage or people who were looking to harm others. He was there blending in with the protesters. He was in plain clothes. He did not have his duty weapon with him. And he was filming just as many protesters do, of course. So he was blending into the crowd. And on the stand during this trial, he very emotionally described what he says happened to him, which was essentially in a very short time. He says he was rushed by a group of officers. All five officers who have been charged in this case are white. Three of them still remain on trial right now. And Luther Hall says in just a matter of 15 or 20 seconds, he was taken to the ground. He was arrested and in the process, pretty severely beaten and injured. He had significant injuries to his face, to his body, and he's had residual impacts from those injuries to this day. Some plates in his neck and near his shoulders. He's had pancreatitis, can still have some difficulties eating from all of this. And notably, he did have a partner that night as well, who is white and also undercover. They were not together at the time, but the partner partner also took the stand and testified that he too was arrested that night as a potential protester, but he was arrested by black officers and he claimed it was a completely textbook arrest. He was not injured in any single way. So some of the local community outrage here, of course, has been that Luther Hall was, was beaten because these officers, it's alleged, believed he was a protester and just simply a black man. And that's certainly been a lot of the testimony that's been coming out in this trial. Yeah, so the trial, there's three officers on trial, but they're not, they weren't the only op officers implicated in his beating. At least one other officer has already, uh, he's already pleaded guilty. How did he explain himself on the stand? Because the other thing that happened to is, you know, these officers weren't exactly upfront about what happened. Yeah, I mean, certainly as part of the allegations from the prosecutors here is that the officers themselves had exchanged some text messages prior to the protest even starting, indicating that they wanted to beat up protesters, essentially. That's what some of the text messages, according to the prosecutors, indicate. That that officer that you mentioned, he's now a former officer, Randy Hayes, he has since pleaded guilty. And he was questioned very significantly by the defense because initially he had said that Luther Hall was resisting or wouldn't put his hands up, wasn't complying with the arrest. And that's why they had to use some amount of force to effect the arrest. On the stand, he completely did a 180 and said, I was in the wrong. He said, upon hindsight and recollection, I was in the wrong. And Luther Hall was not resisting arrest in any way. So he did change his mind. Now, again, it's important to kind of note here that he's already pleaded guilty. He did indicate he's seeking a more lenient sentence from the federal court because he is seeing potential prison time just like these other officers officers are. So the defense was kind of hammering on that, saying, "Are you? did you just change your mind so that you could get a better deal? Um, but he again was saying, no, I, I need to come up here and tell the truth that Luther Hall was not resisting arrest when we used force on him. So, so far the trial's been going on for uh, two weeks. I was seeing some of the coverage uh, from your station and there's been suggestions that it's dragging on too long. Um, just uh, where does the case stand now and how long is it expected to last? 
We did get some indications yesterday that it might be starting to wrap up. The defense initially had said they were going to call up to 30 witnesses, and they have now told the judge that may not be the case. The prosecution still has the case, so they have a few more witnesses they want to call before it would go over to the defense. It's interesting here because there are three defendants, three separate officers. Each of them have their own defense attorney and are clearly taking their own defense strategies. Some of them are saying, you know, my officer was nowhere even near the scene. Some of them are saying perhaps Luther Hall did in some ways, you know, have some culpability in this as well. So they're each taking different strategies, which is is causing the trial to go on a little bit longer. Um, so I do think it could wrap up perhaps by the end of this week, likely into next week. Um, but it it will, of course, be up to a jury to decide whether or not these officers will be held accountable. And part of the big concern about this particular case, when this jury was picked, it is an all white jury with only two black alternates. So far, it doesn't look like they're going to get to weigh in on this case. Um, so a lot of people are sort of watching the outcome to see really where this will go. And perhaps one of the officers may be found guilty. Um, perhaps none of them will. It, it's still really up in the air at this particular time. Um, when I was sort of reading about this case, I thought a few things. A, how damaging this case is going to be uh, for the relationship between the community and the police department, which, you know, you don't need any, any, more, um, any more incidents to sort of damage that relationship. But then also I thought about the rank and file and just how they're reacting to this information. Do we know how the rank and file police officers, their take on this case? There is, um, there's an interesting kind of component to this. There are two unions that represent officers in the city of St. Louis. One represents a lot of the officers and one represents particularly the black officers. And they have made some remarks that union has said, they think it's sort of interesting that there is silence from a lot of the rank and file and even from the leadership that they have not spoken out in support of Luther Hall, that there has just kind of been a lot of silence um, about this particular case. And I think that's part of the question for the community here is when we talk about a blue line and supporting police officers in their job, does that blue line extend to black police officers given this particular situation? Um, so there are certainly those folks who are saying, you know, we really need to look at the this is really an issue. But from the community standpoint, too, I've also seen some people who say, you know, perhaps police need to look at their tactics. Do they need to have an undercover officer there at all? Because they feel like it was meant to monitor the protest community only. And there's some some people that are maybe not in support of Luther Hall for that particular reason. So there are a lot of dynamics here at work. There has been a lot of division. And of course, there's a lot of racial division in St. Louis, as there is around the country as well. And that's why I sort of feel like this particular case is, is kind of a powder keg of all of it. It's so true. I mean, what we haven't sort of touched on is uh, in sort of the unfolding of this case, there have been allegations that the officers were particularly heavy handed when it came to dealing with the protesters, not just Luther Hall, but other protesters, not physical, but maybe using, you know, uh, pepper balls or things that, that were really not necessary considering the way the protesters were, were behaving. And that's like a whole other topic of conversation. Um, investigative reporter Lauren Traeger with our St. Louis station, KMOV. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it.